On Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 93, you're gonna meet the devil at the crossroads, head to the 90s to listen to our featured artist, and you're gonna learn five crucial things to do before your very first open mic. All that and more right after this. I'm Tony Polo Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 93. I am so pumped you're here. This is the show that you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week. And this week, we're gonna dive right in to a very hot topic. In fact, one that strikes fear in the hearts of many guitar geeks, raises anxiety levels, and ultimately can lead to one of the coolest moments of your guitar journey, and that is playing an open mic. Playing an open mic is one of those things that really ends up on everybody's bucket list. Everybody's guitar dream scene generally kind of focuses around some sort of performance of sorts, and open mic is a great place to start. But how do you best prepare for an open mic? It's seemingly one of those most daunting tasks. It's, it just seems so difficult, but I'm gonna share with you five things that make it seem a lot easier than it is. Now, I'm not saying that this is gonna cure all of the anxiety that exists. I'm just saying that if you follow these five tips that your success at an open mic, your getting on stage at an open mic will be just a little bit easier. So let's dive right in. And I want you to think of playing your first open mic much like, uh, I don't know, robbing a bank. Bear with me, I'll, I'll give you the details. Because step number one is to case the joint. You need to do a little bit of recon. You need to go and check in. You need to figure out what's this open mic thing all about. So what I want you to do is actually go to the open mic purely as a spectator. Don't even bring your guitar or maybe leave your guitar in the back of the room or in the car. Just, you can leave it at home. I want you to go to the open mic and take it all in. Learn what happens at an open mic. See how the sign-up system works. Maybe there's a list that you put your name on. Maybe you just go talk to the person hosting it. Maybe that's how you sign up. I want you to meet the host. If the opportunity presents itself, be like, hi, you know, I'm, I'm Tony and I'm here. I'm just checking out the open mic. I'm thinking of playing this one of these days. And just sit down and enjoy the songs that other people play. Your whole purpose in casing the joint is to really just be a part of the atmosphere, really understand it, take some of the ambiguity out of what you think an open mic is and actually see it for yourself. And if you get a chance, meet some of the other players as well. You'll be amazed at some of the stories that pop around in an open mic, where people started playing guitar, when they started, how they decide to do their first open mic. So first step is to case the joint, okay? Just do a little recon, see what it's all about. The second step is to pick two or three songs and learn them. Okay, really learn them. I'm talking about from start to finish. Memorize, memorize the lyrics, know the chord changes, and if there's any kind of signature lick or riff, uh, know that as well, off the top of your head, okay? Think like uh, Sweet Home Alabama has the boom, boom, bam, bam, boom, bam, bam. That would be a signature riff or lick, or something like that. Now, the whole point of picking two or three songs to really get an intimate knowledge of these songs, okay? Like I said, memorize those lyrics, memorize those chord changes. Of course, you're gonna start out with having to print out the lyric sheet and the chord changes, but your whole purpose in learning these songs is to eventually wean yourself away from those chord sheets and those lyrics in the comfort of your own home so that you don't need them later on. The second, or rather, I'm sorry, the third step or tip that I have for you is to rehearse those songs. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Tony, you just told me to learn the songs. Now you're telling me to rehearse the songs? Isn't learning the songs the same as rehearsing? Actually, I beg to differ. I actually think they're two very different things. Learning the song consists of you just working through all kind of the trouble zones and, and really ironing out the details. Rehearsing the song is when you take the song, you start it from the beginning and you play all the way through till it ends. Whatever happens in the middle, I want you to play through. Why am I telling you this? Well, it's gonna give you a couple of different advantages. Number one, you're gonna learn how to just perform the song, right? It's not, it's no longer practicing, you're actually rehearsing, you're performing the song. Number two, if you run into any trouble in the middle of the song, I wanna encourage you to continue playing because by practicing this, it's actually gonna be a skill that you'll develop because as much as you prepare for something, things will never go 100% perfect, okay? 
somebody's gonna be making noise in the crowd, somebody might drop a glass, you might forget the words, you might forget a chord change. I want you to run into this during rehearsal and force yourself to overcome it and play through it, right? Even if you totally lose track of your strumming hand, I want you to maybe even just percussively strum on the guitar. Just force yourself to keep working through it because through that, you're gonna be able to build up the skills to face any adversity that you may face while you're performing the song. So just a quick recap of what we have so far. Number one, do a little bit of recon on the open mic. Number two, learn two to three songs. Number three, rehearse those songs. And number four, this one actually helps put a ton of anxiety uh, behind you. And that is pack your gig bag, okay? I want you to put all of the essentials that you think you will need in your gig bag that you're gonna bring to the open mic performance. This could be extra strings, a string winder, a string cutter, extra picks. It could be a tuner, extra batteries for your tuner, maybe an extra cable, maybe a DI, something simple in case the open mic doesn't have a DI. I want you to bring anything that you think you will need. Maybe a fold up guitar stand or something like that. Maybe just a polishing cloth to like rub your hands down before you get on stage. They might be sweaty. In fact, if it's your first open mic, they may very well be extremely sweaty. But the whole purpose of preparing yourself in this way is to put yourself in control of the things that you can control, okay? Because there are some X factors with open mic that you can't control. Who's gonna be there? What kind of sounds are gonna be made in the audience? Um, whether or not you get to play two songs or just one song, or maybe, maybe you don't even make the first night of signups. That's fine, but let's try and control things that we can control, and that's the items you bring to make yourself feel at home. Make yourself fully prepared for the open mic, because you don't wanna get there and think, oh my gosh, I forgot my tuner. It's not like you can't ask somebody else for a tuner, but it's just really nice to have the things that you can control in your control. So pack your bag accordingly. Now, this last and final tip that I have for you is one that may seem a little silly, but again, it's gonna try, it, it's really designed to tame your nervousness. And I call this the play-by-play. -play. So maybe the day or two before your, your first open mic, I want you to pack your bag, walk out your front door, and then pretend that your house or your apartment, wherever you live, is the venue. So I want you to open the door with your guitar gig bag over your shoulder or maybe holding your case. I want you to walk into a specific room and I want you to set up as if you're gonna play the song. And I want you to plug in all the cables, turn on all the amps or, or whatever. And I want you to go ahead and play through the song that you're gonna play at your open mic. Just by act of walking through the door, undoing your guitar case, or undoing your guitar case, no, taking out your guitar, setting up, playing the song, putting your guitar back, that's gonna help you actually visualize your performance. Okay, it's gonna help you actually get in the mindset of showing up, taking your guitar out, playing, and then putting it back. It seems silly and it seems easy, but mentally, I really believe that this will give you an edge because when nervousness starts to creep in, there's little things that you forget. And having done it and gone through the, the play-by-play, -play, you're already, already gonna be one step ahead of where you'd be if you just kind of decided to just willy-nilly go for it. Now, with that tip, I said turn on the amps and things like that. One of the things I wanna mention is that if you have a chance to play guitar plugged in and sing on a microphone prior to going to an open mic, that's another advantage that you can give yourself because playing on a mic or playing your guitar plugged in can, be, can feel a little bit jarring at first. So better to get that out of the way at home than at the open mic when it's your time to perform. And I threw in a last step, and this really isn't a step, but this is just a little food for thought. The last step is to obviously go to the open mic and perform, and for that, you should give yourself a huge pat on the back. And I want you to think of it more as a learning experience than a performance, okay? Because we can't control any, everything, like I said before. And the thing is, is that some things are gonna go exactly like you planned and some things won't. And either way, it's totally okay because you're using this open mic as a learning experience. And you're using this as to get one step closer to your guitar dream scene. And that is a huge accomplishment. So again, pat yourself on the back and treat it as a learning experience because every single performance you make from that first open mic all the way down to maybe playing your own gig one time, 
is going to be a learning experience. Each time you're gonna get better, you're gonna get more confident, you're gonna get more comfortable talking on a mic, you're gonna get more comfortable tuning on stage, all those little things. You're gonna learn each and every time you perform, it's gonna get you a little bit closer to that guitar dream scene, playing an open mic, playing with your friends, etc. So I hope you enjoyed this little open mic pep talk and I hope it gave you the confidence to pursue it because it really will get you closer to your guitar dream scene. And speaking of guitar dream scenes, I do want you to know that Acoustic Tuesday is brought to you by Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Tony's Acoustic Challenge is an acoustic guitar program like you've never seen before. To learn more how it can take your playing to the next level, please click on the link below in the description or just visit tonysacousticchallenge.com and you'll see how daily progress can be fun and get you closer to your guitar dream scene. And once you're at tonysacousticchallenge.com, don't forget to hesitate, don't forget, don't hesitate to request your invite. All right, moving on down the line, I've got some Guitar Geek trivia for you. And this one is a, well, this is just a cool piece of luthier slash artist history. So here's your Guitar Geek trivia question. Which luthier in his 25th year of building guitars collaborated with James Taylor to create a James Taylor signature model? Was it A, Brian Gallup, B, James Olson, C, Kevin Ryan, or D, Robert Benedetto? Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, I will be sure to give you the answer and a little extra tidbit as well. So you're gonna have to stay tuned for that. Now, before I go any further, I do wanna introduce you to the man behind the scenes, of course, wearing the hat, Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. the first. Noah, good morning to you. How are you? Tony, good morning. I'm, I'm really good. You're really good? I, I feel good. I'm a little tired. We talked <laughs> about this, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, well, Friday was my youngest birthday, but that aside, that was fun. But I also had a friend visiting who had two kids, and the kids made friends with another new neighborhood kid. So I think there was, I think what I said to you exactly was, from any given time, there was eight to 12 kids in my home for a constant <laughs> straight 48 hours over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Noah so. came in with his hat all like shifted, like hair was poking out the side, his eye was like twitching. He's like, <laughs> I, I'm so excited to be at the <laughs> studio today. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a, uh, it was, it was a lot of fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, happy now. Uh, Sebastian is your youngest. Is yes. that correct? Yep. And and he's tur he turned three. Correct. Wow. That's good. That's great. I'm trying. I'm tracking a little bit. There's a lot of them to keep track. of. Well, to put this in, uh, to give maybe a little more perspective. When you and I met, um, I had four kids at the time. And so, man, within the last whatever, you know, eight years, we've added two more kids. Are you talking so. about like when we met at the outdoor rink? No, at the, no, that's right. I guess that w we didn't really meet then, though. That was just a brief encounter. That was a brief encounter that we realized later on. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to tell you the story in this episode today because I think it's one that is, it's, it's um, I don't know, it's one of those things where it's just serendipitous and then later on it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. We've met before. Yeah. Like no joke, Noah and I had a meeting. I never, I didn't know Noah from anybody and I helped him out with a medical issue We'll call it a medical issue. <laughs> sure. Boy, this is this is going to create some imagery, isn't it? Um, we'll get to that story here in a little bit. Um, but I do want to hit the mailbag uh, right away because some great stuff came in. In fact, uh, I got a wonderful letter, a full-on envelope with a with a photo CD from Rick C from Sacramento, California, and he says this: a small win. Made a trip to Las Vegas in February and went to Heartbreaker Guitars after hearing about it on your show. I wanted to hold and play some truly nice high-end guitars while vacationing there. Before we left to go there, my partner Tamara said to me, you better not come home with a new guitar. Brendan was awesome and we met Toby, his dog, too. While there, I played some great guitars including a sweet bourgeois presentation series with Brazilian Rosewood, among others. If in Las Vegas, I advise people to call ahead to see him for personalized service. While there, my partner Tamara, Tamara latched eyes on a beautiful Taylor GS Mini Koa. She got excited about playing again and started talking about picking up a guitar again after many years. So after we left, on the way home to Sacramento, I called Brendan from the airport and bought the Taylor as a Valentine's Day present by phone. 
Did I mention that it was February 14th? She had no idea. When it arrived, she cried with excitement. Future fam jam, thanks for the tip, Tony. So I wanna thank Rick for taking time to, uh, to send this letter and also the accompanying pictures. It was so cool to see your experience at Heartbreaker Guitars. And also, I love the, the kind of guitar geekism that was hidden in there. There Tamara is kind of hanging out with Rick at the guitar store. She sees this Taylor GS Mini and it sparks her interest in playing again after a long time. I think that is just a, a glorious story and one that I am very appreciative uh, that you shared with us, Rick. Now, I have to say, this is not the first time an Acoustic Tuesday viewer has been to Heartbreaker Guitars. In fact, I was, I was can we say stalking? I was stalking the Heartbreaker Guitars Instagram. <laughs> and um, I noticed, it said, it said uh, some more happy customers, the caption or whatever they call it on Instagram. And I look at the picture and I was like, I know those guys. That's Jeff S. and Dave H. Uh, they're Tony's Acoustic Challenge members and Acoustic Tuesday viewers. And there they were with Brendan and they were checking out a uh, uh, Preston Thompson OM. I believe uh, uh, Indian Rose with Back and Sides. And I want to say, I want to say one of those two individuals went home with that guitar. I don't know which, but whomever it is, congratulations. You've made me jealous. Uh, so pretty cool, pretty cool little Heartbreaker Guitars <coughs> connection there. And little Birdie told me that's probably not the last time we'll be hearing from Heartbreaker Guitars. Brendan and I have been emailing mm -hmm. in furious fashions about my potential <coughs> guitar that I'm going to be coming home with when I go to Vegas in September, but also some other things, some Acoustic Tuesday interesting segment ideas. Okay. So I'm pretty excited about that. Okay. But stay tuned for more information on that. Uh, now, Noah, it was a small win to see some Acoustic Tuesday viewers at Heartbreaker Guitars. Yes. And speaking of small wins, here's my forced segue into you <laughs> sharing some small wins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me just say, Tony, that you don't have to force me. Um, I could do small wins all day. As long as, long as the good folks out there keep uh, sharing them, I will keep reading them. So, there. Well, well thanks, Noah. So, the <laughs> so, so there. So there's that. That's good. Gets good. Okay. Um, all right. So first small win comes from Robert R., who says, uh, and this, I, I like this, again, this wasn't planned. It must be like some subliminal things or something. <laughs> Robert R. says, played at my first open mic style event yesterday as a finger style player, nice. as opposed to the standard chord and strums. Nice. By the way, where I did play in abandoned high school, I didn't play for over 40 years. I'm 71 now. Holy cow. Yeah. That's awesome. Congratulations on the first open mic. Um so there's there's that one. That's very apropos, okay. Noah. That is like one of those uh, you said subliminal moments. Yeah, because it's one of those moments that just things just line up. See, it makes you wonder. It's like I obviously saw your notes for the show. Yeah, somewhere, and then maybe that just stuck in my brain, and so it feeds my own work. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like finding some random guy's son's tooth on the ice. Okay. <laughs> More I, on that. In yeah, second. I know there's what you, actually, I know what you mean by that. There's a little there's a little context I should provide, but yeah, we'll get I, there. Okay. <laughs> uh, great. Shall I move on? Yeah, please. Sorry, okay. I'm, I'm done interrupting at least for the time being. So next one comes from Travis N, who says, um, "Okay, now he he has a small win, but he prefaces prefaces it a little bit uh, by saying, since you mentioned listening to podcasts in uh, uh, the AT episode ninety, I think it was." Uh, is that right? Where we talked about the, uh, the 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 run? Well, the run and the uh, was it the Disgraceland podcast? Oh, I I believe it was either eighty nine or ninety. Okay, um, he says since you mentioned listening to podcasts, I thought I'd pass along this neat running podcast I found. It's called Acoustic Tuesday. <laughs> I know weird name for a podcast on running, but it's fantastic. But that's not my small win. <laughs> then he gets on to a small win. My small win is that my daughter and I ran the Vulcan. That's cool, Vulcan. That is cool. Uh, ran the Vulcan Quarry Crusher. Vulcan Quarry Crusher in <laughs> Norcross, Georgia on May 4th. The race is 1.8 miles down into the quarry and then 1.8 miles back up out of the quarry. Oh, man. Uh, great race. And being May the 4th, may the 4th be with you, Star Wars characters were out in force, pun intended, from the Georgia Garrison 501st Legion. That's awesome. 
That sounds like a, that's a cool idea for a run. Yeah. I love that. I think so. Of course, you've never seen any Star Wars, but... Correct. Uh, and Hashtag guilty. So what I found interesting was we were curious how the, how the racing story was going to go. Um, especially because I felt like I just kind of droned on and on and on <laughs> building up the story. You but, really built the suspense. But the folks were very nice and generous and seemed to enjoy it. So that's good. I did see one comment about it being the longest 30 feet ever. Right. <laughs> yes. Which I thought was pretty funny. Correct. Uh, yes, that was definitely correct. Okay. Let's see what else is going on here. All right. Oh, yeah. The other one I wanted to share comes from AJ. AJ J. Uh, found Tack while looking for some exercises to get back into guitar after quite some time away. Uh, just got through my first full week of lessons, which also happened to be my first real foray into finger picking. Nice. Now I'm starting on the finger picking jumpstart course to learn the style better. Also picked up a bottle of uh, Akintoshin single malt after seeing it featured at the end of the second dart challenge from AT10. Oh my gosh. Um, sorry, Tony, I'm a scotch lover. Uh, this is my first week watching on the day of release, but love the show and appreciate all you're doing to help people like me on their guitar journey. Awesome. Now, now back to binge watching past episodes. <laughs> and there you go. That's way cool. Well, thanks for sharing those, Noah. I feel like I feel like I should share the story, uh, the tooth story. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. You were saying that, and I know we've shared it before, but I couldn't remember if we actually sh- had ever shared it in an Acoustic Tuesday episode. I don't think we had. It has a hockey tie-in, and it's how Noah and I first met, but I didn't know he was Noah. I didn't even know his name. So I used to live in, in, in Belgrade. Montana, which is just due, it's just due west of Bozeman, like 15 miles or so. Which is where I live. Which is where Noah lives. And uh, by my house, there was an uh, outdoor skating rink. In the, in the, uh, in the winter, it would freeze, you know, and you could go out there, throw your skates on, shoot a puck around, what have you. And it just so happens that by Noah's house, there was a, an outdoor skating rink as well. Now, mind you, Noah and I had not met at this point in time. So I'm out there skating around on some winter day. And this this father and his son are over in the corner skating. His son's first learning how to skate. Well, it just so happens that um, out of the corner of my eye, I see the son fall and just start wailing, crying. And I was worried. And I went over there. I think I asked. I, I said, "Are you you know Are you okay?" And it turns out that the the young boy lost a tooth. So I skated around a little bit, and I ended up finding the tooth on the ice and I delivered the tooth to said father and son and they proceeded to go home I'm assuming to urgent care or something like that fast forward um three four years I'm working at the local music store music villa and this new guy comes on to uh coordinate lessons and I was one of the teachers at music villa and um this new guy his name is Noah we start talking about something and it turns out that uh we got on the topic of hockey or skating or something like that and he said yeah my son busted a tooth skating on that outdoor rink in belgrade and i i looked at him and i'm like no way and i'm like i'm the dude that gave you the tooth and noah's like no way no way you're the dude it was like one of those moments where you're like yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah." And you're so excited. No one else probably cares. But, <laughs> but it was cool because we had already like, started to kind of have a friendship by that, yeah. by that point. So for us, it was, it was like, wow, that's pretty cool. It was another layer. Cool. Who knew that uh. we lived a block away from each other? <laughs> and that, yeah, that that was you. And you were a part of that experience. Pretty Anyways, neat. small world. Everybody has a story, right? Right. Uh, well, moving on. This one actually keeps going down the Noah train of thought here. <laughs> so this is this is what we're listening to this week. And when I say we, um, this artist was actually forced upon me uh, by Noah because uh, a couple weeks back, months back actually, <clears throat> Noah says you got to feature this artist, and I'm like, dude, I'm not gonna feature them. I'm sorry, I'm just not. And then like. Two weeks would pass, and he's like, dude, put them on the list. I'm telling you. You got you to gotta feature this. And I'm like, okay, you, you, you need to give me three reasons. And he said, well, acoustic guitar is his like, primary instrument. And I said, okay, stop. I don't need any more reasons. I need to listen further. And 
the artist who I'm referring to is the band Days of the New, specifically Travis Meeks, the lead singer, uh, writer, and arranger of all the tunes, uh, is an astoundingly awesome acoustic guitarist. And I never really knew the acoustic guitar played such a large role in his writing and the overall recordings. I never noticed it because Days of the New, they were kind of 90s. I would put them in the grunge-ish scene, if you will, uh, to kind of, if I'm throwing around labels to try and help you envision where they're at. Um, and I never noticed the acoustic guitar was such a prevalent force in their music, in all of their music. Despite any sort of uh, additional instrumentation, the acoustic guitar really lies at the heart of, of all of these songs. So just to give you an idea of how the acoustic guitar plays a role in, in Days of the New, uh, here's their song, uh, Face of the Earth. It's a live show. It's there's there's some nudity, so I mean I don't know is that a disclaimer? So let's let's have a listen. that that music clip ran a little longer than usual uh, because Noah is absolutely just, he his, he's just relishing in the fact that that I chose to feature Days of the New. He's, he's literally mouthing all the words as he's showing the clip and then he's like pointing to his arm because he's got goosebumps. He's like, look at this, look at this. <laughs> I, I will admit I'm pretty giddy. Um, <laughs> I, do, I do not keep it a secret that Travis is one of my top musicians composers of all time it's i'm pretty stoked and i think I, I you know i thought at the beginning when we first started talking about days of the new i'm like is he just saying that like what is, is he serious but after diving into the full catalog i i concur with with noah he's a pretty prolific uh, arranger composer writer uh he's dealt with some issues but it seems as though this year maybe last year he started to kind of turn things around it looks like he's playing solo again which i think is pretty exciting uh so if you're out there and you see travis travis meeks is, is the lead singer's name if you see a show by him uh cheer him on because he's doing what he needs to do playing music i mean he's just he is extremely talented and one of the things again that surprised me was the use of the acoustic guitar within this rock grunge setting, if if you will, we were talking earlier, it seemed as though uh, uh, I was getting a lot of Alice in Chains type vibe from it. And Noah, you made a comment. You're like, it's like uh, MTV Unplugged in a band all the time, I believe was the words that <laughs> yeah. you chose. And it's true. It's this really cool uh, um, organic acoustic feeling music, but it's got, it's got some force behind it, some power behind it. And one of the things that really stuck out to me was the use of the acoustic guitar for those kind of signature riffs, those real hooky riffs that that pull you into the song, that kind of are earworms. They stick with you all the time. And uh, a great example of this is this tune, uh, Bring Yourself, which I found another live performance of. Uh, so let's have a quick listen to that. Yourself to me, you know it's the world that 
So just looking at different performances, it looks like Travis favors uh, Takamini acoustics and Taylor acoustics. And one of the things that's super geeky that I think you'll all enjoy is his use of alternate tunings. From what I hear and from what I kind of gather from all the different albums is that he favors kind of open D, but I'm not gonna say he just sticks to that because his use of alternate tunings is pretty apparent on, on a multitude of songs. And speaking of songs, here's the quick discography. There's only three. And I want you to think of, if you're trying to remember these, just think of a traffic light. You'll have all the albums, okay? So the first album, Days of the New, or the Yellow album, was released in 1997. That's the one I'm most familiar with. I remember playing NHL 97 uh, to that particular album with my brother Mike, who introduced me to uh, Days of the New at that time. And then next up in 1999, they released Days of the New 2, also known as the Green Album. And then finally in 2001, uh, they released the Red Album. And uh, you can visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT93 uh, to get links to purchase those albums, see those live performances in their entirety, and overall just learn more about Days of the New and Travis Meeks and, and geek out. Now, Noah, before we get off topic here, <coughs> yes, I know that there's a story that I don't even think I know the entire story, Oh, but I'd love for you to enlighten us <clears throat> because Noah has a special connection to Days of the New. Okay. <laughs> is that true or is that yeah is that... no it is it's I'm, I, I'm it's just the giddiness it's giddiness I, I think I even have mentioned Days of the New to you back like it probably at AT1 when you're like yeah what artists are we going to show and it's it's been quite some time let me also say that um, my wife doesn't like them <laughs> <laughs> So that's a thing. That's a thing in there uh, that's been kind of fun through the years. But anyway, so here, here's the story, okay? So we pack up from Southern California and move to Belgrade, Montana in May of 2006. It wasn't that much that long after moving here, probably within the first six months that we were here, that after the release of the Red Album, you know, there was some some time in there and Travis wasn't doing very much. Um, I saw this thing on, I think it was Facebook out then. I can't remember. Maybe it was MySpace. Maybe it was MySpace, <laughs> but I found somewhere that they were looking for a new bass player and were wanting to audition bass players. And I was like, I got to do something. I got to, I got to, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So I went ahead and reached out and contacted the, the guy who was the contact for, for Travis at the time, which was the drummer uh, who was drumming with him. Uh, made contact, was chatting with him about some stuff. Uh, he gave me the dates for the audition and all that stuff. So I guess the story is that I was really excited that I could have went and, uh, <laughs> and, and auditioned for Days of the New. But I just moved my family to Montana, and they're back towards the East Coast. And was I really going to do that and, like, fly and go? And knowing Heather doesn't really like the music anyway. <laughs> and then I'd be hanging out with Travis all the time. And But there's the thing. I came close to auditioning for Days of the New. Well, it shows, too, because I will say this. Whenever we listen to Days of the New here at the studio, Noah will sing harmony all the time to every song he knows all he knows the songs like the back of his hand and uh it, it's a treat to listen to part of me wonders what the future would look like if noah was a days of the new ah, member ah. well you know that's pretty awesome to think about but it, i'd be hard pressed to you know consider doing that and not doing this 
So that's actually, that creates some internal struggle within me. To con- <laughs> but, uh, That's all I'll say about well, that. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you skipped the audition. Thank you. And I'm glad that you decided to feature Days of the New. <laughs> well, you're welcome, Noah. Uh, I look forward to going out to lunch with you and you paying for it since I featured Days of the New. Okay. Uh, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for the recommendation, Noah. That was very good. It was it was cool to, I, and I was telling Noah this. Just just one quick thing before we move on. Uh, you know, I get I get stuck in a rut, a listening rut, and and your submissions, you Acoustic Tuesday viewers, have been so awesome for that because I get stuck either the there's three avenues I go down: straight ahead flat picking bluegrass phenoms, straight ahead uh, singer songwriters that knock my socks off. Or finger style. Those are the three avenues I generally go down. So this was this was a little bit outside my realm of comfort uh, because I thought the '90s acoustic guitar, like, eh, come on. But then after listening, I was like, you know what? This is very relevant, and people need to know about about artists like these. So again, thank you, Noah. I appreciate it, and thank you, Acoustic Tuesday uh, viewers, for submitting artists. You know, if at any point in time you're watching the show and you think, gosh, I wish Tony would feature fill-in-the-blank artist, uh, please submit it at AcousticLife.tv. Just go to AcousticLife.tv, click on the submit link, and you'll see that you could submit an artist, you can submit a product for review, or you can submit your guitar signal if you so choose to do that. So we love to hear from you. If you have any artists, please go ahead and submit them there. And speaking of doing things, uh, we want to know what you think about the show so far. So in the comments below, let us know and please include where you're tuning in from. It is so cool to see where you guitar geeks call home. And it's also pretty staggering to see how many guitar geeks from all these different places watch Acoustic Tuesday. So please leave a comment. And while you're leaving a comment, please ask yourself the very important question. Have I subscribed to the Acoustic Life YouTube channel? Because if you haven't, please do so. It's super easy. Click that red subscribe button and don't forget to click that little gray bell. That'll give you a notification of each and every new video that gets posted so you don't miss out on any of the guitar geekiness. Speaking of guitar geeks and missing out and comments and things like that, Noah, what are the comments that we absolutely <clears throat> must not miss out on? Okay, I'm glad you asked, Tony, because as always, there are great comments. And I know we say this often, but Acoustic Tuesday viewers, I think every single one of you are just cool people. Um, Comments are always, they're just, <laughs> they're just positive and cool and interesting and fun. Um, and we certainly appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so some comments. Uh, first one today comes from Ed Y, who says, Tony and Noah, you guys are great. I love the guitar content, and I am a big guitar geek myself. Uh, but the other stories are great and really make the show work. Keep running and wiping out. <laughs> I chose that one because of the last small win as well, you know, where we're... <laughs> We're a little in doubt about, should we share that story or whatever? So, oh, yeah, yeah. So I appreciate the feedback and that you guys actually dig some of those For little sure. extra stories. <laughs> For sure. Because just because we get a kick out of it doesn't mean that you will. Right. That's true. Uh, next comment comes from Jerry B, who says, Jerry here from Pittsburgh, big fan of the show and a big fan of Andrew White Guitars. Nice. Uh, he says they're, they have great value, especially if you're on their mailing list for deals and show auctions. Oh. And he says, look forward to you gents every Tuesday. It's like a pro tip right there. Get on the Andrew White email list because they do deals and stuff. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. I'm surprised you didn't know that, Tony. I know. But, uh, yeah, you learn something new. Learn you know, something we're new. all in this together. You learn something new, you get a new wrinkle in your brain. All these wrinkles, what to do? <laughs> Except for bust out the iron. Uh, Ron... <laughs> Uh, Ron W. just says hello again from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Nice. Um, also, uh, I want to make a comment. I want to make a comment about the comments. <laughs> is that uh, you can always get other, uh, like right here, I'm just looking at David B.'s here comment who says, check out Tobias uh, Roucher or Ruche and Nick Johnson. They're my oh, favorite. Yeah. They're my favorite fingerstyle players. So there's so much to be had in, in the comments. If you as a viewer just go there and want to read through them, uh, you could find new suggested artists there um, and just all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, a couple of people commented on me, thanks for shaving. My, my wife also thanks you for thanking me for shaving. <laughs> um, my dad was upset, by the way. Your dad was? Yeah, he was, he was kind of, he was upset. Wow. That the mustache was gone. Okay. So you hmm. got you got Steve to deal with now. Okay. Call me anytime, Steve. <laughs> um, 
Also, last one I'll, I'll share with right now before getting on to the Know Your Guitar Geek win, because I do have one for you today, is uh, Max asked, um, what happened with Levi at the end of the run? Oh. And so he was asking, who won, Levi or the lady with the dog in the baby carriage? Do you want to speak to that? Uh, Levi won. won. Yes. Levi won. Yeah. Uh, but I know that that him and the the woman who was running with the the stroller and the dog, at one point he said that he could hear them behind him, and he was like, "I cannot let this happen." So I think he I think he goosed it a little bit when he when he felt like she was closing in on him. He also said it was pretty funny. He was also saying how he couldn't bring himself to turn around and look. Yeah, <laughs> that's because right. because that's what he said. <laughs> Because there, because there, he would be turning around and, and and looking back and making sure that the two people behind him <laughs> wasn't gaining on him. Uh, but no, he actually finished well. Um, I think he came in at number fifty. He did. I was surprised. I mean, having yeah. not really trained for it. Yes, he did really well. He did really well. And I will say, um, just to give the unnamed mom with the carriage and the dog a shout out, she not only finished the eight mile. Uh, hill climb deal. Well, maybe I said that, started to say that wrong. It took her much longer. Um, I think we weren't even thinking about her until like maybe almost an hour after we were done. Yeah. And then everybody gathered because she was coming in finally. It was really a cool moment. And it was a cool moment. Yeah. Yeah. But she, she did it. It was pretty awesome. Um, okay, Tony. So, you know, you're a guitar geek. Oh, yeah. Do you want to know what you do when you're a guitar geek? I would love to know because I've got a couple ideas. But Okay, well, Don here says, you know you're a guitar geek when you hit the YouTube full screen button to see more details when the guitarsonal segment is announced. I mean, that is a you know you're a guitar geek when and an absolute pro tip right there. We can all learn from that because the full screen is a big deal. <clears throat> um, and one just struck me um, in the letter you read. From from Rick from Rick yeah and about his partner yeah who hadn't been in the guitar probably wasn't thinking about it very much but saw the the Koa GS Mini yeah um, and it struck me you know you're a guitar geek when the aesthetics of an instrument makes you want to play it absolutely I think is a thing I and I think you know I've I've said that for a long time like you should when you're guitar shopping. The guitar should knock your socks off before you even hold it. Like, you should look at it and be like, I want to play that. Because chances are, if you feel that way while it's in the shop, when it's sitting in your house on a stand or something like that, the guitar is just going to beg for you to play it. You know, and I was also thinking of that last week, actually, <clears throat> because of the question, the uh, Tone Talk question about the maple necks and stuff. Oh, right. And, and I've always preferred maple necks. So... Uh, that was always like a top runner in a base that I would want to purchase. Uh -huh. I really wanted it to have the maple neck. Uh -huh. There were some times that I ended up going with rosewood or something. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's a thing. It's, it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. Speaking of Tone Talk, if you all have any Tone Talk questions, which is where I take your questions in an under a minute... I try to do it in under a minute. Uh, I go ahead and answer them right here on Acoustic Tuesday. You can leave those questions at any time below in the comments. Just put hashtag Tone Talk and go ahead and ask your question. And then once I get enough questions, the next Tone Talk segment will be released. Uh, we're almost through here. I've got one more item that this is something that's so very important because any guitar geek needs to watch this. This is one of the rare occurrences where you can put this movie on, this documentary, invite the whole family around, and everybody will enjoy it. That's not always the case with Guitar Geek documentaries. There's many a time when I'll start up a documentary and say, Whitney, this is one we can watch together, and within 10 minutes, she's sleeping or on her phone. This is one that the whole family can enjoy and will enjoy. It's called Devil at the, Crossro Devil at the Crossroads. It's part of what I think is called the Remastered series on Netflix. And between the story, between the people interviewed, and between the animation, this, this is firing on all cylinders. This is something that every guitar geek needs to watch. The whole premise, well, I guess the subject, is Robert Johnson. It's a documentary about Robert Johnson, and it's, it's animated in a way that really draws you in visually, but also the artists that are interviewed during this documentary 
I mean, we're talking Rory Block, Taj Mahal, Keb Mo, and that's just, just a few. There's a bunch in here. Even uh, Robert Johnson's, I believe, grandson is interviewed in this, and he runs a... Um, operates and curates a Robert Johnson Museum. Um, there's, it's a stunning documentary, I, and I just, I found it extremely enjoyable. It's not that long, and it's pretty fast paced, so by the time you start watching it, you feel like, holy, it's it's over already? I can't believe it. It's, it's just shy of an hour long, uh, but well worth your time, and just a great movie night for the whole family. In fact, I'd love for you to get a little sneak peek of this, so let's take a sneak peek of, at a quick portion of the trailer so you can see what you're getting yourself into here. Robert Johnson is considered one of the greatest blues artists of all time. It's the template for what became rock and roll. I believe Robert Johnson was extremely talented, extremely gifted, and way off balance. Something's spinning strangely in that man's life. That's really just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, this this documentary has it all. So if you don't have Netflix, this is a reason to get Netflix. If you're like me and you're using somebody else's Netflix subscription, basically our whole family is, uh, just put it in the queue. Literally, just, just search Crossroads and you will find it and you will enjoy it. I guarantee it. In fact, if you don't have Netflix, you can get together with your Guitar Geek buddies, split the subscription, use the same login information. I'm pretty sure all of the United States of America does that. I'm sorry if I just outed the people that do that, but I, I do that too. I, from, I do that too. I was just going to say from, <clears throat> from our discussions, no, it seems like you do it as well. <laughs> but we trade off. Yeah. 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 It, it's I, I buy a subscription and share it. My brother buys a subscription to something and shares it. So, yeah. There you have it. There you have it. See, it's it, you, you not only get Guitar Geek information on Acoustic Tuesday, you get, you get ways to get super deals. I don't know. It's just it's a show. It's the show that keeps on giving, really. Uh, and speaking of it being the show that keeps on giving, don't you want your fellow guitar geeks to get the goodness of Acoustic Tuesday? And the answer, the an I'll just answer it for you. It's yes. So please share the show with your guitar geek friends. That could mean sending them a YouTube clip. That could mean sharing it on Facebook. Thanks, Michael K. Uh, that could mean uh, just going to AcousticLife.tv and exploring whatever the case may It could be just you saying to your fellow guitar geek, hey, have you seen the Acoustic Tuesday show? If you haven't, just go to YouTube, type in Acoustic Tuesday, and start binge watching because it's really awesome. Uh, so please share the show with your Guitar Geek friends. The more Guitar Geeks we get to unite every Tuesday, the better it makes the show, the more good vibes get flowing, and overall, it just livens up all of our guitar journeys. I learn from you, you learn from us, we all learn together. Guitar Geek isms abound. I think that's the new slogan. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wrap things up. I have to give you your Guitar Geek trivia answer, but first a quick review of the question. Which luthier in his 25th year of building guitars collaborated with James Taylor to create a James Taylor signature model? Was it A, Brian Gallup, B, James Olson, C, Kevin Ryan, or D, Robert Benedetto? If you answered B, James Olson, you are 100% correct. In 2002, during his 25th year as a luthier, Jim Olsen collaborated with James Taylor on the specifications of a limited edition series of JT Signature Model Olsen guitars. Each JT Signature Model guitar bears a label personally signed by both James Taylor and Jim Olsen. Visible through the sound hole, inside the neck head block is laser engraved with the James Taylor Signature Model designation, in addition to the serial number and year of construction. Jim crafted a total of 100 JT models, 80 of which were standard, JT models and 10, each of two special editions that supplement the standard model with special appointments and woods. Now, to hear James Taylor talk about Olsen guitars, here's a clip of him, James Taylor, showing off his guitar arsenal. This is a, a guitar that uh, uh, James Olsen made for me that is, uh, it's a little parlor instrument. It's a, a, a beautiful small guitar. It has a, a nice uh, loud voice. night. Your mother and I will be back to check in on you in just a couple of hours. I 
love that when James Taylor puts the guitar away, he like tucks it in and says like, good night, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> That's very guitar geeky. So James Taylor, thanks for being a guitar geek and for being incredible. Uh, with that, Noah, much like an indie pit crew, we've changed the tires of Acoustic Tuesday. We've gassed up Acoustic Tuesday, double meaning in there. We have um, fastened the seatbelt of Acoustic Tuesday and given it the green light to continue its many laps around the racetrack to guitar geek greatness. When'd you come up with that? Uh, during you playing that last clip. I was just shuffling through my, my brain, the wrinkles, mm -hmm. and I was like, what have I not done yet? Race car? I don't know much about race car driving, but I'm you assuming... started it. What's that? You started it very confidently. I, yeah, thought, like, I, I thought you like had thought about it previously. Yeah, no. No. Did it come from the days of the new albums, the colors? Was that a... Oh, a no, thing? but it could have. Okay. I mean, yeah, totally. Yeah, I was just trying to wrap it all together. Okay. Yeah. Well done. Much like a stray tooth, Acoustic Tuesday has been found and delivered back to us. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's take a quick sneak peek into next week to see what's going to happen on Acoustic Tuesday. Next week, we'll go on a fishing trip with an acoustic artist. We're going to hear from Acoustic Tuesday artist Will McNichol and get some tips for recording your acoustic guitar. So make sure to catch Acoustic Tuesday every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv. In fact, if you're looking for extra links or the show notes from today's episode, please visit AcousticLife.tv forward slash AT93 and you will get all the links and all the extra special goodness from everything discussed in today's episode. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. And remember, guitar geeks unite. Cheers.